Well, sister wanted me to show you how I'm baking bread. So I'm going to take you on a little journey with me. Uh, I'm not a pro. I've only made three loaves of bread and this will be my fourth. But um, I'll show you how I'm doing on it. I'm taking a bread making class through Homesteading Family. And I'm really enjoying it. And because I'm supposed to be eating gluten free or I'm gluten intolerant, um, I wanted to start learning how to make healthy bread for my family and for myself. So anyway, um, I'm going to move you to a new spot so you can just see my tabletop. You'll hear me talking, but, um, and then we'll go from there. All right, be back. Okay, so like I said, by I, I am by no means a pro at this, but um, you first start with a cup of lukewarm water and it should be no more than 110 degrees because my understanding is it will kill the yeast. I haven't killed it yet, which is a good thing. Um, so I pour it in my bowl and then I add a tablespoon of um, honey and I use honey that's local to our area because I'm I mean, my assumption is it's better, it's better for you. Um, for my allergies, I'm thinking that it would be better to have honey in my area. Um, so you put that in, and that's supposed to help activate the yeast because yeast actually eats sugar. And so um, that's why you add the honey. And then you add two teaspoons of, I'm using Bob's Red Mill Active Yeast, and you fa I found this in the refrigerator section. And you sprinkle that in, two teaspoons like that. And then you just mix it up. And it will, I'll show you, I'll show you a picture of it in just a second, but it will um, still have a few lumps in it, but it seems to go away by the time it's active and going. But, um, ah, can you see that? Uh, I don't know if you could see that, but anyway, that's it. And now we wait 30 minutes for this to activate. Um, between 10 and 30 minutes. And so um, what she's been teaching us is that bread, it's not like a recipe you can use, it's techniques. And so because the atmosphere, the air, the humidity, all uh, makes a difference in how the bread and the yeast works. So um, anyway, for me right now, I've been doing it about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, 10 actually yesterday when it was more moist. So um, I'm going to see how long this one takes and we'll be back in a little bit. Thanks. Okay, so now the the yeast is working. I don't know if you can uh, see that in there, but it's bubbling away. So we're going to add the next ingredients, which it's one tablespoon of olive oil. And you kind of spread it around so it doesn't all land in one spot. And then a half a cup of, of I'm using Bob's Red Mill um, unbleached white flour this time. Um, and you put that in there. And then a teaspoon. I'm using kosher salt, so I'm only using a teaspoon of it. And you never drop it all in the one spot. You kind of sprinkle it on because it um, will kill the, kill the yeast again. So then you mix it up. And, you know, it's still kind of watery in there. So you start adding a half a cup at a time um, flour. And what you want to do is get it to the consistency where um, it's not sticky anymore and it's not sticking to the bowl because you shouldn't have much cleanup 
um, if you have it the right consistency. It should be pulling away from the sides of the bowl. Um, and so right now you can see it's still kind of sticky. It's still like a biscuit batter. So you keep adding a half a cup. Oops, I have a little princess playing Ooh, <laughs> in the background. So you can see now it's starting to pull away a little bit. So now you start giving it a little less flour. And this is where it takes some muscle to get this going. And it's still sticky. I'm going to add some more. And I think this one will do it. Yeah, this one will do it. Maybe a little bit more. Okay. So you can see when I'm mixing it now, it's just staying together basically in a ball. I could add a little more flour because it's still a little sticky. Let's see how that goes. Oh yeah, that's what it needed, just a little bit more. So you see, that's what you want. You want it to be a little, you want it to pull away from the sides of the bowl. Okay, so now I'm gonna flour my board and really you should have a board that doesn't have cracks in it. I just don't have that yet. That's what on my wish list is to get a breadboard. And then you turn it out on the board and get rid of your spoon. Okay, so now we're gonna start the kneading process and really you're just just like you would see it in a in a um, um i mean it's just just kneading and when you need flour you want to start sticking a little bit you add that and it should be about five minutes before it gets to the right consistency and you'll see every once in a while it'll stick and that's how you know you need more flour on that board. And then there's a test that you do to make sure um, you have kneaded it enough, um, which I will show you in just a second. I'll show you, but I mean, I actually know it, it's not enough yet. So I will, because I can see it's still a little sticky. See, if I didn't have a board with cracks, it wouldn't be sticking as much as it is right now. Okay. So what you do is you just take like a walnut size piece of your dough. You make it into a ball. Then you start pressing it apart. And it's called a window pane test. And if you can stretch it so that you see um, light through it without it breaking, which see, I still, I broke it when I was seeing the light. I don't know if you could see that. You know that needs still a little bit more kneading. So I don't think it's gonna need much more kneading. Should be just about done. Okay, let's see now. Make a ball. And then start pulling it apart. Excuse me. And that's actually starting to look pretty good. So I can see through the dough without it pulling apart. You see that? 
So now, what we do is we oil the we oil the um, bowl that you're gonna be letting it rise in. And then you take the dough ball and you stick it in there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a towel and I'm gonna wet it because you want your dough to stay no moist. I'm gonna cover this, I'm gonna put it in a warm place. So I'm gonna, I turned my oven on and the top of my induction stove doesn't get super hot. So I'm gonna set it there for about an hour. And, and then we'll be back. All right, so this is what the bread looks like sitting. I just have a wet cloth and it's just sitting on top of the bread. Now it'll rise for about an hour. Okay, so once your dough has doubled in size, which that's what it's done here, and one way you can test to see if it's, if it's ready is you take your two fingers, you stick them into the edge of the dough, and if the holes, when you pull your fingers out, if the holes cover themselves up, it's not ready yet. If you stick your fingers in and the holes stay open, it's ready. And I know that this is ready. So what you do is you punch it down just like this. And what that does is it takes the, the um, air out and then you put it onto your onto your board and now we would let it rest for five minutes um, so that it will start stirring up the yeast again. We'll see you back in five minutes. Okay so now our dough is ready. You can see it here <clears throat> and what we're gonna do is we're going to do basically the same thing. We're gonna press it out, push it, and what we want to do is make it a little bit bigger than the size of, oops, you can't see. Let me move it down a little. Somehow you got moved up. Down. Okay. So you want to make it a little bit bigger than the size of the bowl. So you keep pressing it and pulling it back, pressing it and pulling it back. Okay. So now it's a little bit bigger. You can see it's off on both sides. Then what you do is you turn the sides under like that. So you have it about the size of the loaf pan. And then to get the air bubbles out of it, which I'm not so great at yet because I don't hit it hard enough, but you throw your bread. So it's five times really hard. And that gets the air bubbles out supposedly. <laughs> It gets it out of my teachers. Okay, so now the air bubbles supposedly are out. We put it into our pan. And now we cover it with uh, a rag and let it rise again, double in size. So there you go. We'll be back. Okay, so the bread has risen. Um, it took about an hour and I might actually let it sit for another few minutes and then I'm going to put it in the oven at 400 degrees and it takes about 15 minutes and then I'll show you how you know if it's done or not. See you back then. Okay, we're in our last part. The bread has come out of the oven after about 15 minutes and this is how we check to see if it's done. Turn it over. And it should sound hollow, and this sounds really hollow. It sounds great. So you just stick it on the bread rack and let it rest before you cut it. Um, and I can't remember if I told you the pan needs to be greased really well, um, even the top lips, because if your bread ends up rising really high, um, you need to be able to pop it out as easy as you can. So that's my bread baking adventure. And now I'm on to learning um, some, how to cook with whole wheats and gluten-free flours. So I'm looking forward to that. Thanks for watching. Bye, Flosstube.